talk about this uh, lymphedema and uh, physiotherapy management. And I know that I'm only given half an hour. It's uh, actually very, very short, but I will try my best to go as fast as I can. Now, the lymphatic circulation, not everybody actually knows that the lymphatic circulation exists. Venous, arterial, no problem. Everybody is so good, but lymphatic, none of us actually pays attention to lymphatic because it's something uh, which is white, uh, which is very, very tiny, and which is actually quite invisible to most of us. So actually, we do not pay uh, attention to this. But is it very important? It is. Remember, the lymphatic system is actually equivalent to your immune system. This is how important it is. You know your uh, soldiers? All your soldiers are actually uh, produced by the lymph nodes, right? Which fights all the infection, which actually filters your body and all this but we never pay attention to it. So today we are going to look at the lymphatic system. Now the lymphatic system actually has been uh, known for a long, long time, right? Since 1787, so it's nothing new. So uh, if you look at the anatomy, uh, it composes of all these things, right? Right up to your, why you do not remove your tonsils now? Why is the Bayer's patch also important? This is the immune defense of your body, right? I'm not going to go in much because I don't have enough time, right? Now, our body has actually about 600 to 700 uh, nodes in the body. And um, these nodes actually is the filtering stations for all your toxins, your bacteria, and even your cancer cells. Huh? And um, it actually regulates a lot of things, and including providing and producing lymphocytes. All of you know what lymphocytes are for, right? And the lymphatic capillaries, we need to know a little bit because when we are talking about lymphedema, we want to know, okay, what is the function of the lymphatic uh, capillaries. And these lymphatic capillaries actually are very, very tiny, as tiny as your hair, right? As thin as your hair. That's why the transport system is very slow. And it is, uh, forms a very extensive plexus throughout the body. Okay, and it is made of a flat single cell endothelium, not like our veins and our capillaries. Okay, and um, if you look at this, you see the blue one is the venous, the red one is the capillary, but the white one that intertwines is actually our lymphatic capillaries. So this is an enlarged uh, picture. Okay, and then the lymph fluids that actually flows through the lymphatic cap capillaries, they are clear, colorless, it's not red, that's why you don't see it. Okay, it's similar to blood plasma, and uh, uh, it consists of all these things, right? And uh, very important is the interstitial limb and cow, actually, that uh, flows in the uh, lymphatic capillaries. Now, what is lymphedema? Okay. Um, I think not everybody actually has heard of lymphedema or pays attention to lymphedema. Now, I've got patients who come to me from a very big institution who have been to see doctors and, you know, it's a, the professor tells me that uh, there's nothing that you can do with lymphedema. You just have to live with it for life. And we have patients who have gone uh, doctor shopping from one doctor's one institution to another and they have always been told that nothing can be done. But now we are paying attention to lymphedema and we know that there is something that can be done for this patient. Now lymphedema is actually an abnormal accumula accumulation of protein-rich fluid. It, because it is protein-rich fluid, that's why it's difficult to get rid of lymphedema. We have to differentiate between lymphedema and edema. Edema is very fast. You elevate the limb, it goes off very fast. But if it is protein-rich, it tends to stay in the interstitial space and it gets hardening and it becomes fibrotic. That's why it's uh, non-pitting. It's like elephantiasis, you know, where it's very hard, fibrotic, and you press on it, you can find that there is minimal pitting. Not like edema, you press instantly, it pits, and then it uh, goes back to its original form. But um, this is uh, slightly different. Am I going too fast? No. Eh? If I'm too fast, you don't catch me, uh, let me know. I tend to rattle because it's only half an hour, right? All right. Um, now, the onset is usually 
uh, very slow, progressive. Patient will always say that they realize that their hands are very tight when they wake up in the morning and it stays tight the whole day. It's not like it's good in the morning and it gets worse at the end of the day. No, it stays there on the whole day. And then uh, it, it is pitting initially. Okay, that's when the protein-rich fluid has not fibros. So initially it's pitting and later it becomes non-pitting. And it always starts uh, distally, right? And then uh, stammer sign is positive. That means when you pinch, you cannot pinch the, the fingers. Like when you hold it, you can pinch your normal fingers. But if it is uh, lymphedema, you will not be able to uh, pinch them, right? So, um, and uh, cellulitis is very common. If you ask a patient, they will tell you that they get at least three times a year. And they have to be on at least seven to ten days of antibiotics, you know. So it is very common and each time after one episode of cellulitis, the lymphedema actually uh, gets worse after each episode. Okay? And then um, later on, in the later stages, you will see skin uh, stages, uh, skin changes like hyperkeratosis and papilloma, okay? which is uh, quite common in uh, delay or chronic stage. And um, we classify lymphedema according to uh, how they present. And usually the latency period is the one that the patient realizes there is some heaviness in the arm, some stiffness, but they do not see yet the swelling. Then uh, stage one is still uh, easily reversible. And um, stage two is not, sorry, uh, the word not is, uh, it is, uh, spontaneously irreversible. That means not irre uh, not spontaneously irreversible. Not spontaneously reversible. Sorry. So um, the tissue actually, when it comes to this stage, is is very difficult, but it still can be done. It takes a longer time, right? And then stage three is the stage where we call it the lymphostatic elephantiasis. That means the arm is as big as the elephant's leg, or the leg is as big as the elephant's leg. And it is a very hard, fibrotic, and uh, um, quite difficult to treat. But there is a way to treat. Huh? We have to use a special kind of bandaging where we use pellets, you know, like bullets, uh, pellets kind of thing, to actually uh, break the uh, fibrotic structure. Now, uh, we have come up with a lot of all these uh, bandages and uh, special items that we, which can be used. Okay? Now, uh, what we see a lot is actually sec secondary lymphedema. We have congenital lymphedema. When the baby is born, they already have a big swollen limb, right? Or big swollen scrotum, you know? The lymphedema is not only in the hand or in the leg, you know? It can be in the abdomen, it can be in the scrotum as well. But most of the cases that we see are actually secondary lymphedemas. And uh, it's usually post-surgery or post-radiation for cancer. Right? So if you have a cervix, then you develop a lower limb uh, or if it's a breast, normally you develop an upper limb. Okay? Sometimes it's due to filariasis, like I say, elephantiasis. And then sometimes orthopedic cases, we see a lot of lymphedema, which is due to trauma, can be infection or uh, venous insufficiency. And in obesity, we can see lymphedema as well. Now we have obese patients who comes with bilateral lymphedema and the doctor always tell them this is fat. But it can be treated, surprisingly, right? And uh, some of the cases are unknown. And uh, breast cancer, normally, okay, very high percentage will develop uh, <coughs> lymphedema, very common. Now, the overall incidence is up to 25%, okay? But studies have shown that from 12 to 57% actually develop after post-surgical uh, cancer, especially those with... Uh, uh, radical uh, mastect huh? and um, continue by that they have radiation therapy all the more because that time all the vessels the lymphatic vessels have hardened and there is no return of the lymphatic fluids that's when the lymphedema will develop okay but if the patient actually goes through sentinel node uh, removal the percentage of uh, breast lymphedema uh, of uh, lymphedema of the arm is very much lower from 0 to 7%. That's why these days a lot of people actually opt for sentinel node uh, biopsy. Okay? And the, the onset is not known when it will come. Some develop after 5 or 6 years and some immediately, almost quite immediately. Okay? 
So then, how do we treat uh, lymphedema? We use complete decongestion physiotherapy, okay? It consists of five things that we have to do according to the water technique. I'm trained in the water technique, okay? We do manual lymphatic drainage. After that, followed by compression bandage, remedial exercises, and skin care and nail care. Hygiene is very important here because we do not want the patients to develop ulceration. And then instruction on self-care. It's very important we empower patients because like somebody says, if I give you a fish, you eat for a day. But if you, I teach you how to fish, you will eat for a lifetime, right? So in physiotherapy, in this case, it's the same. If I treat you, it's only for a day. But if I teach you, you will learn how to treat yourself for a lifetime, right? So uh, this is very important for uh, patients who actually has lymphedema. So you find that actually MLD actually consists of very gentle massage exercises because remember, the lymphatic vessels are so tiny, right? So we have to actually not be too kasa. So if the patient goes to the um, Chinese massage, you know, and comes back with uh, bruises everywhere, it's actually not good for the patient. We will always tell them, go, don't go for this kind of massage. But patient says it's very good because the blue-black means the bad blood is coming out. They always tell me that, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I also practice dry needling, you know. We, when we needle the patients, the blood will come out. And then they use a cup and they put, um, it's a com uh, morbid combustion, right? They suck the blood out. And the patient always say, see, all my bad blood come out already. So I will get cured. And part of this is uh, actually psychotherapy. When they see this blood coming out, they actually feel better. So we tell them, no, actually this uh, massage, when you have blue blood means you have caused a lot of uh, breakage in the capillaries. That's why blood is seeping underneath your skin. But they said, no, all this is bad blood. It's sometimes very difficult you know, to explain to patients our medical uh, terms and their beliefs, you know. But it helps them because the brain is so powerful. They feel that the pain is much better. Maybe the pain gate theory works. They have so much pain, they have forgotten their original pain. You know, that's what uh, pain gate theory is all about. But anyway, uh, that's what the patient will tell you, okay? So it's actually a gentle form of massage. Huh? Afterwards, we'll have the practical sessions that some of you are interested in. I will show you how actually we do all these things, okay? Now, um, Again, MLD only came into Malaysia in 2008. Uh, this, we are the first or the pioneer group to be trained. It started because uh, our prime ex-prime minister, Abdullah Badawi, remember the wife, and Dawn actually developed breast cancer. She went to US for treatment. And then she came back with a very bad lymphedema. Then she always fly to US for treatment. That's when uh, it costs a lot of money, right? And then she brought in a, a manual lymphatic therapist from US to stay in Putrajaya and treated her every day. And then after that, uh, that's when Budi Penyayang realized that we have to bring somebody in and teach us and train us. Okay, so a group of us were actually trained um, um, by Budi Penyayang and it cost Budi Penyayang something like 300,000 okay, to train 18 therapists. Okay, so actually I'm trained uh, by Close International from US. Okay. Um, Anyway, thanks to her that uh, Malaysia started uh, the first uh, MLD uh, in history. Huh? Because before that, nobody actually knows about what MLD is, you know. The beautician has been using, have been claiming that, you know, they can actually make your face look slimmer by doing MLD and all this, you know. So now, uh, we look at MLD in a different light. We are doing it for medical reasons.